Good evening. It's great to see you all tonight. This is the beginning of the fall, and you can tell. It's like quite a few of you here. We're so glad to have you guys with us. Um, apparently, there's a football game tonight. So some people decided they need to go to football games. We won't list any names or anything. But uh, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> My name is Chad. I'm the missions pastor here at FBC, and I'm so glad to spend a few minutes with you this evening. <clears throat> uh, it's so good to see all of you. Um, we, have a, we do have a special guest with us tonight that you may or may not know. Um, our friend Slava uh, is from, he's one of our missionary partners from Moldova, is here with us this evening. <clears throat> I didn't tell him I was going to do this, so it's great to see you, brother. Uh, he's a great guy. He, uh, he leads the Bible seminary uh, there, at the, uh, there in Kishnev. Uh, the capital city. So almost every year we go, we get to interact with him, and he gets to come to the U.S. every year to, to both raise support and uh, and build connections for the for the the seminary there. So great to have you with us tonight, Slava. Tonight uh, I'm going to talk to you about pride. Uh, Jason introduced this. I think he's going to spend some weeks talking through uh, this particular sin. It's an interesting thing. A lot of times we try to stay away from focusing on any one issue, especially a sin, that's a negative thing and people don't like it so much, but this one is an important one. It stands unique uh, in all of them. Uh, C.S. Lewis calls it the greatest sin. If you've ever read Mere Christianity, he puts a lot of effort into talking about why pride is such a terrible thing. Uh, actually, I've been listening to Mere Christianity quite a bit. I've, I've read it several times over the years and uh, it was interesting. He said, it's the most sidious among the various sins that tempt all of mankind in the big picture, it may seem less terrible because it's a sin of the heart, not necessarily of the flesh. It works at re its rebellion internally, and it doesn't show up on your basic outside test. So all of the other sins, most of them are born out in the flesh. They're actions. You can see the effects of them in your life, but pride starts in the heart. And so you can carry it with you throughout your life, and it can kill you from within. C.S. Lewis says that it's physical and therefore it's visible, but pride is a spiritual sin and it destroys the spirit. Here's a quote. It says, it's through pride that the devil became the devil. He said, pride is the anti-God state of mind. So consider this. Sometimes <clears throat> we appeal to a person's pride to try to get someone to act better. Like you should be a little more proud. Like act a little better. Have some pride in yourself. You guys ever said that to anybody? It's very interesting because Satan will gladly trade a physical sin for this particular sin. He will let you conquer lust in your life if it makes you a little more proud. Do you know that? He'll let you conquer greed if you're arrogant when you finish that conquering. He'll trade a lesser sin for this one. <clears throat> a good man can have everything in order and it looks perfect to the external world and still be full of himself, and it can be a complete secret. A good Baptist can attend church and be an excellent deacon and still be bankrupt inside. This is the sin of the Pharisees. They knew God's word. They knew his teaching. They knew what the law told them to do, and they believed they acted it out perfectly. And yet, when confronted with Christ, they did not know him. What a tragedy. This vice, pride, is always ready to trap us. It's always ready to remove the grace that could be ours. When pride is found, it always makes grace its victim, both for us, between us and each other, and between us and God. So what, do I, what am I talking about? I'm talking about this, this sin that causes us to think that we're fine, that we don't need God. It bears itself out in many different ways, self-conceit, like I already mentioned arrogance, but it can also be self-righteousness. It can be complete self-sufficiency. I don't need anything. An American value of a self-made man could fill you full of pride and arrogance. 
Now, this is not to be confused with like the way that someone might identify with something that they enjoy. I'm very proud to be an Aggie. I'm not. <clears throat> but I've noticed some of those people wearing maroon seem to be very proud of the fact that they're and then people, nobody's whooping. What's happening here? I've said Aggie and a and I don't know, whoops. <clears throat> they, okay, they are here. They're always here. <clears throat> oh, a different maroon. Wow, watch out. We're going to have the war of the maroons here shortly. Listen, when you have pride in your child for an accomplishment or pride in your work because you've done something well, that's actually God honoring. You know, God created the world and he looked at it and what did he say? It is good. It's good to honor God with the good things that we do. That's not what we're talking about. Now, be careful because sometimes we can be so proud of our work that our work becomes an idol. That's something else. If something we love is more important to us than God, then it can be its own trap, right? But the sin of pride is actually the rejection of our status before God. Pride leads us to an unhealthy competition where we think that we need to be better than those around us. And so I wanna just give you a few questions, a couple of things. If you're wondering, if you struggle with pride, you might ask yourself, am I better than the people around me? Look at them and ask you, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Like, well, I'm better than that guy. Okay, well, we got problems here. You might ask yourself, do I need help or have I needed anyone's help recently? And if the answer is no, either God has tremendously blessed you or Maybe you're afraid to ask someone else for help. Guess what that tells you? You're proud. Another one is, are you willing to forgive someone that's hurt you? All right, now, Chad, you're going too far. It's a source of pride that you think that person deserves everything they're going to get. And I'm going to make sure, at least in my part, they're going to get everything I can give them. <laughs> That's pride speaking. The Bible says that as much as we forgive others, we're forgiven. That's a very dangerous verse. And it assaults our pride. These are not perfect questions. They're just a few. There's a lot more you could ask, but they expose our hearts. Pride causes division in every single way. It divides us from each other and divides us from God. But we know the opposite of pride is what? It's humility. It's another one of those, if pride is the anti-God, humility is one of those virtues that is so close to the heart of God, it's almost inseparable. You don't find humility in a human heart outside of a connection with God, at least one that represents him well. It reminds us that we worship a God next to whom we're not just small, we're infinitely smaller. Right? He is everything. And we are outside of him, nothing. Right? If we're really honest with ourselves, we deserve judgment. We have been the enemies of God, and yet he loves us and has redeemed us. Everything we have that's of value comes from him. And if we truly believe that, then we're going to act in a way that's humble. Think about some of the verses that say, bear one another's burdens, prefer one another's needs above your own. Think about it, it says, to lay down your life for your friend, or to offer yourself as a living sacrifice, and ultimately, to surrender our will to the will of the Father. <clears throat> when we resist God's movement in our life, <clears throat> when we bow up with that pride, we oppose God and we bring judgment upon ourselves. Proverbs says that God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. This is one of those things that we have to understand. As we kind of look at this, I'm sure in different perspectives of the next several weeks, we see this idea that pride, I want you to know that it can be the killer. Does anybody in here want to be opposed by God? Of course not. And yet so often we're so quick to defend ourselves. We position ourselves like those Pharisees that chase position and power and prestige. But all of those righteous, righteous actions, and they knew not Christ. Let it not be said about you and I. Let's humble ourselves and prefer one another. 
Let's put each other's needs above our own. Let's be a place where we can see that together we can do so much, than any, so much more than any one of us can do on our own. And those of you to whom much has been given know that God has required much of you. Give it. Give it with a whole, happy, and generous heart. And church, let that humility be exposed. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for your word. Help us to be people that reflect your humility, the humility of your son who set aside all that he had to become one of us. And then not only that, but to die a terrible death on our behalf. Help us, Father, to offer our lives as a living sacrifice. Take what little we have and use it for your kingdom and for your glory. Be honored and glorified in us, Father. Help us to reflect you in every way. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful night.